Oh yeah, we're live. Nice. Appreciate it. Cool. Zachary, age nine. And this is a really touching question. He says, thank you for being so brave. Would you help me tell the world I'm gay too? I want to be brave like you. Well, I don't think you need a lot of advice from me on bravery. You seem pretty strong. To see you, I, it took me a long time to figure out how to tell even my best friend that I was gay, let alone to go out there and tell the world. And to see you willing to come to terms with who you are in a room full of a thousand people, thousands of people you've never met, that's, that's really something. There we go. So let me, tell you, let me tell you a couple things that might be useful. The, the first thing is that it won't always be easy, but that's okay, because you know who you are. And that's really important, because when you know who you are, uh, you have a center of gravity that can hold you together when all kinds of chaos is happening around you. That's the first thing I want you to know. The second thing I want you to know is that you'll never know who's taking their lead from you. They both look who's like Who's watching you and deciding that they can be a little braver because you have been brave. That's not bravery. That's Eva. Oh, the girls too. When, when I was trying to figure out who I was, I was afraid that who I was might mean that I could never make a difference. And what wound up happening instead is that it's a huge part of the difference I get to make. I never could have seen that coming. And you'll never know whose life you might be affecting right now, just by standing here, yeah. right now. There's a lot of power in that. Whoa, satanic power. And the last thing I want you to know is, even if I can't promise it'll always be easy, I can promise you that I'm going to be rooting for you. Done. One, two, three, four. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. Hey, guys. Oh, it's the Hague Report. The Hague Report. La, la, la. So, wasn't that disgusting? Mayor Pete and the media are horrible people. If Haik was Jewish, is that a bad thing? <laughs> no, first of all, I'm not Jewish, and no, that's not a bad thing. So, what you just witnessed was the disgusting former Mayor Pete Boot Edge Edge getting asked a, a publicity gross question from this nine-year-old boy that some woman on stage in a rally on Saturday. You may have seen this on the Jesse Lee Peterson Show, at least an abbreviated clip of this yesterday on the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. And this boy asks what this dumb woman calls a touching question. No, that's not touching, that's... That's the wrong kind of touch. That's evil. And then uh, Mayor Pete, like you might have heard me say, looks like a, like a fellow boy like him, only just taller and more overgrown. Right? It's horrible. Horrible. So um, that was over at a rally. Um, Washington Times headline, Pete Boot Edge Edge. Helps a nine-year-old boy come out as so-called gay at a Denver rally. Disgusting. And that was from the leftist local reporter. I call him leftist because look at his words describing this situation. Joe St. George, and I think he's a local reporter, calls it a powerful moment. That's not powerful. That's evil. And so nine-year-old Zachary Rowe, little Asian boy of Lone Tree, presumably over there in Colorado, asks how he can be brave and tell people that he is gay too. 
I'm going to get to your calls. Appreciate you guys calling in, but I have one more clip to show you guys and then some other things. Um, lines are full, so you can't get in. 888-775-3773, but you will be able to get in in a bit. All right? But I'm going to have to get to some calls to clear the lines for you guys. So this dumb reporter, show the, show the thing of him. I have a little... Uh, I don't know, Twitter profile of him. J- Joe St. George, reporting on politics and breaking news in Denver. Ohio born, D.C. and London educated. Aha, that's where the problem is. Or at least part of it, right? Probably raised by beta parents. Past jobs in Iowa and Virginia. Hometown is Youngstown. So he works for KDVR, local Denver station in Colorado. So Joe St. George thinks that that was a powerful moment when, when a degenerate told a degenerate boy, be shameless in your degeneracy, and that's bravery. No. The dumb reporter interviewed this boy afterwards and asked him how he can help other boys become girls. That's my interpretation. Here's the clip. Well, what was it? Why did, why did you ask the question, and, and what, what made you brave to ask that question? Um, I just feel inspired by Pete being openly gay and running for president at the same time. And someday I want to be like him. And how old are you? I'm nine. What did you take away from his answer? I feel like he gave me some really good advice. What what advice would you give other, other boys out there just like you? Other boys? I'd probably tell them to just be themselves. Shameful. And that's that's the other thing. Mayor Pete and all these dumb, evil people, uh, wolves in sheep's clothing, saying that um, that's who you are. That's not who you are. That's what you are. And you can overcome that. So it's degeneracy that they're preaching. Degeneracy that they're preaching. Um, Let's see. Giovanni A. says, here. Lin Yen Shin says, Hake, do you love giant robots? Make more white babies so that they can build those robots. Joel Black. And he's a laughing face. Appreciate it, Lin Yen Shin. Uh, no, I love no one, Lin Yen Shin, but I do appreciate that. Very nice. From Canada. Canadian dollars. Appreciate that. That's cool. Um... Real quick, by the way, before I get to the calls, did you see my clip from Mr. Badger's call, Mr. Badger's from Mr. Badger from England? He called my show February 18th. I think it was a Tuesday or a Thursday or something. And I, it's titled Clip, Young Man Forgave His Mother and Is No Longer Interracially Attracted. And it was such a nice testimony is what he referred to it as uh, that he it grew up atheist always kind of right leaning so he came across Jesse Lee Peterson's stuff and then he took Jesse's advice forgave his mother and his he did the silent prayer co- consistently did the silent prayer for 2 weeks and watched how his thoughts were and his ego were like satanic trying to get him not to forgive his mother. He had all this fear that he didn't expect he would have. Well, all these thoughts of uh, trying to put fear in him, actually. I don't know if he actually had the fear, but he was seeing all these crazy thoughts. And he's an, although he's an atheist, he can say that the ego is satanic. It was such a nice report. And it was so funny, too, because uh, (laughs) Joel says, then we got to forgive again, hey? And I think that he's referring to the interracial attraction thing. <laughs> because uh, Joel doesn't see anything wrong with being interracially attracted. At least not that I know of. He's, he, he, boo-boo was not Creole. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. <laughs> and then his parents, I mean, the Creoles are mixed themselves. And all Mexicans are pretty, pretty much mixed, right? <laughs> So, isn't that interesting? Like, the America stayed kind of white, but the Spaniards that went into Mexico and South America, they inter- interracially mixed with the Indians, right? The natives. 
and they turned like into brown people. <laughs> Anyways, that's just a side note. And so yeah, and, and I uh, I like I do like white girls, but I also like others. I grew up around them. Right? Yeah, we grew up around them. That's diversity for you. And so some people in my chat, in my comment section, were distracted by the fact that I brought up and Mr. Badger brought up interracial marriage. And Mr. Badger is not into the race thing. He wasn't, he was never like super hardcore pro-white. He did know that they have like a Muslim issue, terrorism and different things, grooming gangs and stabbing attacks and all that stuff over in the UK. But he's not... He was never into becoming like a white nationalist or an ethno nationalist or anything like that. He just knew that this, you know, the race thing was being pushed falsely by the left. And so pff, that's that. But it was funny because they got distracted from that. And I do understand it's like a distracting point if you're not used to that idea that interracial marriage is like, or interracial relationships is a little. Odd, because it's been put forced on us that it's it, it's racist to think that that's wrong, or racist to be against it, or racist, whatever, right? But the po the point was the f such a nice story about forgiveness and silent prayer and stuff. The um, interracial thing is such a minor side note, but it was just an interesting point. So, um, some of you guys are calling about that too, but um, yeah. I'm going to get to some more stuff. I saw other YouTube comments, and I'm there's always this argument in the background about sin and the Bible. I hope to touch on that. Not the wrong kind of touch. <laughs> not the wrong, not like touching, like this boy's question to Pete. And then hopefully if I can get to the Bernie Bros, there's some drama about the Bernie Bros. There is a Democrat debate tonight, I guess. I forget. I heard that there's a Democrat debate. Tuesday night, South Carolina primary is coming up. So Tuesday night, I guess it's from South Carolina. Anyways, let me get to some callers, and uh, then we'll keep on going. Chris out of Arizona, nice to hear from you. Chris? Hi, James. Hey. What's up? I'm glad that you have your own um, show now. That's awesome. Uh, well, you always had your own show, but I mean. Right. Yeah. yeah thank you. You're separate from Jesse now. Congratulations. I appreciate it. Thank you. I wanted to say what a great interview you had with Jason Bartlett. Is that his name? Yes. That was the South African man who came here as a refugee and is walking from Texas to D.C., to bring attention to the farm murders that are happening in, and the um, taking land, stealing land without compensation that's going on in the ridiculous um, South Africa world. And it's so destructive. That's right. That's right. So uh, you and Jesse have talked about South Africa quite a bit on your show, but uh, Jason really brought it to the forefront, and he had firsthand experience. Yeah. And so it made it more real. Yeah. That interview was excellent. And part of it, what he said, how they were tortured, mm -hmm. was really hard for me to hear, actually. Yeah. Because um, it was, it's pretty violent. Right. Yeah. I mean, he had, he had, I heard him in other interviews with even more graphic stuff. And <laughs> I'm not, I'm not into hearing about the graphic stuff and showing all that graphic stuff, but it is reality. So. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it's really hard to, um, it's hard to hear. It really is. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's scary. It's, um, you feel it in your chest, you know, how, how people are so, um, you know, tortured. I, I, anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know if you have contact with him, but if he hikes the Apple, Appalachia's, yeah. um, he called it Appalachia. Uh -huh. That's what everybody calls it, but the actual, <laughs> People that live there, it's Appalachia, and if All right. they won't trust him unless he says Appalachia or Appal, you, so, know, you know what I'm saying. And so, are those people called Appalachians or are they called Appalachians? Okay, if you are an Appalachian living in 
and living there, <laughs> it's Appalachia. Okay. We call it Appalachia. Right. Outside of Appalachia. But you understand that they came from Scotland. Oh, okay. They, they are, there's no longer, um, what do you call it, the Highlanders? Yeah. They They got out. And they moved to Appalachia. Wow. So the Scottish or Scotch or whatever, Highlanders, um, they moved to America and moved to the Appal- Appala- Appala- Appalachian Mountains. <laughs> Appalachia Mountains. Yeah. Well, wow. It's not, it's not Appalachia. And then those people, they're called Appala- Appalachia- Appalachians? Correct. Wow. Correct. Are you Appalachian? I am not. Okay. <laughs> well... <laughs> Uh, I'm part Scottish, but uh, I lived in the area, and um, let's see. I did live in the area, and that's how I know. And also, a what do you call those people that go to different countries and speak the Word of God? They're, they're called... Uh, oh, missionaries. Missionaries. Yeah. A missionary is the one that told me that, you know, because she lived amongst the Appalachians, she said, if you say Appalachian, they won't trust you. Okay. Yeah. Well, interesting. It's kind of weird. It's yeah. kind of weird, but but it's it's the truth because they were, you know, forced out of their own country. Yeah. And and the establishment calls them Appalachian. Dang. But it's Appalachia. I heard that they're very poor up there or some of them they are. are. I'm showing pictures, Joelle is showing pictures for me of some of the crazy injuries suffered by South Africans. I think the guy with the crazy injury on his just above his eyebrow that you're looking at was or is actually just a side note just for the viewers live video viewers um this man's cousin jason bartlett's cousin he was shot through the back of the head and it exited out his above his front uh, well above his eye wow (laughs) and he survived but with like permanent injuries and i don't i'm not sure if I would imagine that it would affect his brain function. This man was shot in the back of the head. You can see where the bullet exited above his eye. Miraculously, he survived, but with permanent injury. And then another man was burnt, crazy burns and stuff, um, in another pick. So that was, those are people that I think, well, I know that this one was actually his cousin. Uh, He described his cousin being shot. So I think that it was his cousin. Yeah. So, yeah, I heard that the Appal- Appalachians were poor, or are poor, and they don't even have running water, and, and they make the people that pretend like they're poor in the city, they ma- make them look rich by comparison. I haven't had much contact with, yeah. with them, but um, I've gone to their stores, and they have old-fashioned um, gas stations, almost like uh, driving onto a... Um, Indian reservation. Yeah, it's it, it, it is poor. Okay, it's cold up there in those mountains, and <laughs> it's foggy sometimes in the winter time. Yeah, but yeah. it's beautiful. Oh gosh, the countryside. They have really beautiful land. Wow, it's beautiful. Um, so yeah, I appreciate it, Chris. Thank you. Thanks for the You're thanks welcome. for the update and the corrections. I'll pass <laughs> that along if I catch them again. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Take care. Thanks, James. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. Let me get to Jason out of Long Island, New York. Jason, thanks for holding. What's up? Hey, James. Hey, good to How hear you. How you doing? Doing fine. First of all, congratulations on your you know, show. Moving on. Yeah, I, that's nice. I'm streaming on my own platforms. Finally. Yeah. Independence, right? Yeah. Being kicked out of the nest, almost. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, um, you know, I heard you say you will vote you, you will vote for Bernie Sanders instead of Pete Buttigieg, Buttigieg. Right, but I mean, I won't vote for either one of them. But I did pick socialist over radical homosexual. I have Even if the homosexual was a capitalist, would you take the socialist? Oh dang! Oh man! Ah. Uh. That's our that's a hard question, man. <laughs> so like if it was if it were Richard Grinnell, somehow Richard Grinnell who's like a supposedly a Trump supporter and he's the direct 
named the acting director of national intelligence. Um, I guess I would pick Richard Grinnell over Bernie Sanders because Bernie is pro radical homosexual, and then Richard Grinnell, even though he is homosexual, I don't know. I think I tr trust him a little bit more or distrust him a little less than I distrust Bernie Sanders. Thank you, Jake mm -hmm. Hudson. You tweeted out the stream. Thanks, Jake. That, yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing I, I disagree with Donald Trump, you know, because he yeah. celebrated the uh, the homosexual month. Right. Remember that? Yeah, I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, that was a shame. Yeah, that's weird. I, 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 didn't I knew it was coming, though. Did, did you know that he was like that going in? He, he was? Yeah, I knew that he was. Uh, okay with the gays, and that you he knew didn't, that. Yeah, I didn't. Before I he, knew that he didn't mind kissing up to them. And, oh man! Yeah, I knew going in, and it was like everybody's doing it. And I'm not saying that it's justified, but every politician now is going to be like that, unfortunately. Does Jesse Except know for that? because Je what's that? Does Jesse know that? Because Jesse called President Trump a good man. You know, even though no man is good. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I, you'll have to ask Jesse his take on that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Well, anyway, the, the reason that I call James Hake is because yeah. I want to know what is love? What is really love? You and know? you're asking me? <laughs> yeah. I don't know, but I know I know what it's not. I can give you examples of what it's not, but I cannot give you an, an example. I don't know what it is. I can like you don't know point what out it is? I can maybe point out examples of what I think is love. For okay. example, when when Trump t sticks by the truth, I feel that that's love. And when when Jesse tells somebody the truth, whether they like it or not, or whether everybody else likes it or not, I th feel that that's love. But and what Jesus did, I felt that that was. I think that that's love. But other than that, I don't oh. know, man. But I do know that all this. You know the liberal talk about love. They they don't know what that is, and somebody yeah, was me neither. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. So so love is telling the truth. Yeah, that's part of that's a big part of love. I think. Does the Bible say what love is? Yeah, I mean it. It gives you examples of what it's like. Yeah, it says, like for example, in First Corinthians thirteen or something like that. It has that that passage that everybody reads at their wedding love is patient love is kind it's long suffering it doesn't keep a record of wrongs and so hmm. those are nice descriptions i think and it hmm. love never uh, fails or love never ends so yeah and but another be, thing that always bothers me about love are we supposed to love everybody the same oh yeah you know i don't know i think I think so, maybe, maybe, but that doesn't necessarily mean you act the same or or treat them exactly the same way, because mm. different situations call for different measures, you know. Uh, maybe uh, I have to call uh, Jesse on this one. Yeah, but you should also, you know, what Jesse always says, and and I think it's so right. Know for yourself, like that guy that I told you guys about, Mr. Badger who um, called into my show and he said that he was attracted to, I mean, his first girlfriend was a Somalian girl and he's a white guy from UK. And he said, oh, he said that after he forgave his mother, he didn't have that attraction to the other races anymore. Not that he didn't still think that they're pretty, but, um, but he wasn't attracted anymore. And so like he, discovered it he didn't try he didn't sit and stew and try to figure it out and read the bible and all that stuff he just he just discovered he just discovered uh forgiveness and that the thoughts are lies and things like that and satanic he didn't it just so, kind of happened upon him so i think that that's how you should find out what love is not trying to read the bible and have all these definitions of love because that's just intellectual learning and you're going to define you're going to call something love that's not real love because it seems to fit the description and then it's going to be wrong it's going to be shallow it's going to be a, a not a real understanding of love so you know what i mean rating is a no no say that again oh that's just a side note is a no -no? i'm not saying it's a no no you 
you sound interracial. <laughs> Are you Hispanic? Uh, no, I, I'm Hispanic. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah Hispanic that's again. Hispanic is interracial already. <laughs> oh man! So don't even worry about it. <laughs> what? So uh, okay. So, I see, but so I just said that as no, a no. side note. I said that as a side note. It's not. It doesn't mm. even matter, man. You know this okay, this boy well, this boy um, I call him a boy. Yeah, Twenty three year old man. Let me tell you the rest oh, of this story. Let me tell you the rest of this story because it may help. This guy, Mr. Badger, he didn't even know or care about the interracial thing, whether it was controversial, whether it was right or wrong or indifferent. He just found himself not attracted to them anymore. So, likewise, you shouldn't worry about whether it's right or wrong. Just leave it as a, I don't know. Huh. Right? Okay, so... Yeah, but the th- yeah, the thing is, I'm Hispanic, right? And I like white women, but uh-huh. that's not my race. So I feel like maybe there's a problem right there. Yeah. And Jesse says we need white babies, and I can't make white babies because because I'm not white, man. Right. So, you know, yeah, uh, you know, and people, you just want to have the right mindset of like seeking what's right. Don't worry about these little details of life, or big details of life, whatever, because. Hmm. You're gonna get hung up on, on uh, w- kind of like what Joel has said in the past, where Joel was hung up on wanting to do what's right rather than just be and just be right. I think that's what a lot of Christians and people who want what's right get carried away with, with trying to focus on, on the, on the uh, rules, making up rules for themselves rather than following yeah. God. Yeah, so don't sweat it just because you're attracted to them. You can't help. It's kind and of like for a, yourself, right? Yeah, don't judge yourself. It's kind of like the. It's kind of like it's not as bad, right? But it's not. It's kind of like the homosexuals who are who are attracted to the like the males who are attracted to the males. They can't yeah, do anything about it. They just have to not judge themselves and seek God, and and then God will take care of it for them. Huh. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Hey, uh, I won't take more, much of your time. I know you got to do some news. Well, I appreciate it, Jason. It's nice to hear from you. Great talking to you. You do. All you right. Work. Yeah. Take. By the way, right. if you ever want private counseling, I don't know if you're aware, Jason Lee Peterson does offer it. Private counseling. He does. Yeah, off air, just over the phone or over Skype or in person, whatever you want. Call the office. What the about you? Office. Say that again. Do you do counseling? I do not. I would. Oh. I I would be like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, you'd be like, you'd be like I that. I don't know. Ask Jesse. Yeah, I'd be like, go ask Jesse. Thirty bucks, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, James, it's fun talking to you, man. Yeah. I, I love your show. Thank you, man. It's good to hear from you. Take care, Jason. All right. Bye, bye. Bye. Let me get to G- uh, Nathan, out of Vancouver, Canada. First time caller, Nathan. Thanks for holding. What's up, James? Hey. How you doing, man? Doing fine. Nice to hear from you. Yeah, nice to hear from you, too. By the way, um, let me interrupt yeah. briefly, Nathan. I'm going to yeah. open the treasure chest on DLive at 45 after, in like 15, 17 minutes. All right? Get ready. Nice. All right, go for it, Nathan. Um, no, actually, your last caller, uh, Jason? Yeah. Yeah, no, he kind of, he kind of, not, I guess the co- you the conversation you guys had kind of answered uh, my question, but it was it was geared towards like interracial dating and and things like that. And uh, I think it's more of uh, is it a sin? Did they say it in the Bible? Yeah, I don't think that, so. That interracial dating is a sin. You know, it talks about. It's quite clear about. Um, it seems like the Bible is quite clear about not getting with women who have other gods. Right. And it does talk about other nations, but I think the basis of those other nations is the fact that they have other gods in particular. And so okay. then you end up worshiping the woman's god or the woman or whatever. So right. that's that's by far the main thing. I don't know if it's a sin or not. I wouldn't say that it is. I would, wouldn't say that it is. Some people say that it's racial tr- yeah. treason or traitorous, race traitor yeah. or whatever. Yeah. I think that's taking a, it a bit too seriously. To I me, so it, to, to me, it doesn't look right. Generally, yeah. some people yeah. are right. They just kind of look fine together, 
But and sometimes um, it's not really right. Yeah, sometimes it just doesn't look quite right. And part of it too, honestly, <laughs> is is the man is often, and this is the case even with same race <laughs> relationships. It almost sounds perverted. <laughs> As um, the, where the man is just weak, you know. Nowadays, yeah, no, it's so it, common. No. The man is is weak. You can tell his demeanor is weak. He's not confident, strong. He's not leading in the couple. He's That's not so leading. true. That's so, so true. I, I've I've like I've witnessed like um, a white man with with a black woman, and the black woman is so much more overpowering. Not saying that this is like you know not all, not all, not all. Right. But, yeah. But the but you can like tell that she is like I guess what what would you call wearing the pants in the relationship maybe right yeah you know so that that's interesting that 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 is a good point that makes that makes a lot of sense but no I just wanted to give a shout out to the YouTube chat because we have some some back and forth um, some back and forth debates on whether or not it's a sin or whether it is and uh, right it's, on. it's it's good it's good Queen Butter Queen Butterfly brought it up so oh, shout cool. out to her. Shout it to her queen, but she brought it up um, this morning, so it kind of got me going. Oh and yeah, she was really one of the people whose YouTube comments I saw. It was funny. She's yeah, all, no, and then I I asked you too. I asked you about like, is it disgusting or something like that? Which I right. which I agree, it's it's not right. But, yeah. Um, I just yeah, I just was curious, and I wanted to get your take, James. And cool. Yeah, no, I I I, uh, I appreciate all of your all of your stuff, you Jesse, and everybody there. And I hope to come visit you guys in about a month. Nice. Right on, Nathan. Come, Look forward come to meeting you. Come check out the men's forum and come check out church as well. Sweet. Looking yeah. forward so to it's that. Great, great talking to you, James. You too, Nathan. Take care. See you, you take care, man. All right. Bye. Bye. Yeah, um, IMH was another commenter on the, on the YouTube video. He said, I forget what he said now. Oh, he said, oops, I'm interracially married. Be right back. Going to get divorced. Or LMH. I, that's not what I meant. <laughs> Once you're married to this person, especially if you have kids, just stay. Just jeez, <laughs> you're taking it like too seriously. Oh, but Queen Butterfly said something funny. I wanted to address it. She's all nothing perverted with about falling in love with someone. I think of another race, right? Um, the the comment gets cut off in my notifications, but. Just that phrase falling in love that is kind of perverted because it's not that's not actual love That's not love you're falling into at least not the real kind. It's such a shame that the word love has been abused So bad that people don't even know what it really is and That's why the liberals are able to say love is love. You don't even know what love is liberals <laughs> Right, so that's that let me read a couple of more um, YouTube super chats. Lord Loaf says, "I am bread." Thank you, <laughs> appreciate that. And S O B C says, "My Hake donation before you get demonetized." Don't say that, S O B C. <laughs> Marcus Jones sucks. Says that's not my words. That's his name. All right, Marcus Jones. Uh, says Oreo babies don't taste like the cookies. Stop it. <laughs> SOBC, I would vote for mama before I vote for a radical homosexual or a socialist. Dang, strong words. Lin Yun Chin Hake, that long passage was just describing attributes of God, aka love. And Marcus Jones Sucks says, Welcome to Guess That Baby's Looks. Interesting. <laughs> so, let me get to some more calls, I think. Let me make sure that I'm covering the stuff I wanted to cover. Yeah, I may have to get to the Bible stuff tomorrow. We'll see. Rick, let me get to Rick out of Hampton, Virginia. Rick, nice to hear from you. What's going on, James? How you feeling? Doing fine. Hi, hi. Doing all right, man. Yeah, how about you? Well, I'm fine, man. Good to hear from y'all. Man, I'll tell you, man. Um, tell me what you think is going on, man. Um, I guess to... Um, God damn well, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get to my point off. Um, what do you think was going on with um with President Trump and um the Democrats? Do you uh you think um President Trump will win the election? I think he will. We'll see. But if anybody can win this election, it's President Trump. There's no other human being in the world, <laughs> I think, 
who can beat anyone that they put up there other than President Trump. And these yeah. Democrats, not one of them is remotely impressive. I mean, except for Bloomberg, it's impressive that he's rich. <laughs> you know, but besides I that, like if I did, not, I'm sorry, what? Besides that, I'm not, I don't like any of them. Me neither, because if I was, um, if I was, um, a Democrat, Bloomberg would look the best for me. Yeah. Out of all of them. Yeah. Bernie, he, I, I wouldn't even consider him. You yeah. know, socialism, so bad. a lot of people always ask you what socialism, and I, the, the best definition I can get for socialism is, um, is um is is taking other folks' money to, to give to other folks until yep. they run out of money. Yeah, that's that's basically what I say with socialism. And I was trying to use the health care. You remember when, it, um, when President Obama had his own um, health care? Yeah, and um everybody that had insurance, they rates went up to try and cover those who wasn't insured. I and know. And every year they see that ten ninety five to make sure you had health insurance. Because if you didn't, they'd find you two thousand dollars. I was so glad President um, Trump just executive order that out. Yeah, you know, um, I mean, California put it. that California put that in place so that we have to we have to still have so called health insurance. And you know, Obamacare, the, the people who created Obamacare, they made uh-huh. a deal. They made a deal with some of these Christian health share companies, and I'm uh-huh. like a part of one of those. And um, I don't know if California is going to accept that as valid um, substitute for insurance. Where health share is where if somebody needs, you send money to them directly. You just, uh, uh-huh. they kind of manage it and they say, okay, James, this month you, you spend, you send 200 something dollars to so and so. They need such, such and such. And so I send them directly that money. Directly to the other mm-hmm. people, and a bunch of other people send it to them, and as needed. And it's so much, it's so much better and more honest. It's like d- seemingly less corrupt than a lot of these insurance companies, where they insure all kinds of madness that you don't want covered. You don't want to cover somebody's contraception. You, w- we need more babies, yeah. and you don't want to cover ah. abortion and all that transgender surgery and all that stuff. It's ridiculous. Yeah, that's, I, I agree. I'm like, you know, everybody that fights for abortion, I tell people I'm straight up, I'm against abortion even in rape because I really believe if that family get behind that person that's been raped and encourage them and support her, I believe a lot of times they want to keep the child. Yeah, I totally agree. We but, shouldn't be, we shouldn't be, um, we shouldn't be allowing abortion in the case of these so-called exceptions. That's another thing that Trump is wrong about, in my opinion. The, he's What's he's that? for he's okay with abortion in the case of rape, incest, and um, the life of the mother. Right? Rape right. and incest are not valid reasons to kill the baby. Yeah, because you know, because the way I look at it, um, James, I believe most time when it comes to rape, the victim knows their um, knows their attacker. In most cases, to me, yeah. Right. The way the way I look, you know, the way I look at, you don't know she was trying to lead that man on or something, and the man True. just got fed up. Don't make it right what he did, though. Right. But you don't know what's behind all that. I'm like this: if you want abortion, won't you pay for it yourself? You pay for it yourself. I ain't got a problem, but you should not be using tax though, taxpayers' money to pay for something that you want to just, you know, have, you know, you ain't in danger. Just want to just get rid of a baby, where you can uh, enjoy your party life and your vacation life. And honestly, they should go to some other country that allows that barbarism. Un- unfortunately, yeah. our country does allow it, but we should disallow that stuff. We don't want people in our country who are that degraded morally that they're going to kill a, the most innocent person in the world, a baby, over you know, just, over just so ahead, James. some trauma. Anyways, yeah, go ahead, Rick. You know, when they, and, and, uh, when they have all these, um, what, what do you call that, um, all these foreigners come in. Yeah. They come in here and bring all their godless ideas here. Yep. You know, and um, I'm like, and they talk about, and, and they come, try and complain about the conditions here. Then how can you just stay in your own country if it was so good there? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, you got just like you remember the guy you played when you were uh, asking, well, how can you stay in Mexico? Right. I believe he, I know he got a better pick because I think he'd rather. 
they'd rather hit a Democrat's lie to him about racism <laughs> than be dodging bullets from the cartels in Mexico. Exactly. Totally. You know, so that's the way I look at it. I mean, they just, I mean, the Democrats have been making money off this for years. And right. It's time for people to really wake up. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate hearing from you. Thanks, man. Love you, brothers. Always good to be on the show, man. Love you and God bless y'all. Take care. Let me get to Harkman out of Modesto, California. I was up in Modesto recently in the last oh. several months. Harkman, good oh, to hear yeah. from you. What were you doing? I was, I was marching for straight pride. <laughs> We had a straight uh, well, pride didn't have a, rally. Uh, well, they, they will be having a 150-year um, anniversary of, of the birthday. Of, of Modesto, huh? Yeah, 150 years. Wow, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, so, um, yeah, it's great. And, uh, well, I know uh, Las Vegas is always a touchy subject, so we can just, like, forget about it. Why but, so? You know, if you're... Uh, forget uh, about just, Las um, Vegas. Well, um, what about Las the, Vegas? Well, you remember in 2017 there was a shootout. Oh yeah, that Las Vegas terror attack from that old, uh, allegedly from that old white guy. I say old; he was in his 50s, 60s, or something. And he was well, he, up he in. He was a big time. He was a he was a really big time real estate investor. Like, wow. Like, as big as you can get. And, uh, and he shot up and, a country a music victim. festival and killed a bunch uh-huh. of people and injured a bunch of people like crazy. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, well, you know, like, they were living the life. They were, they were at the concert. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, he, he took up too many weapons up to the room. Yeah. And, uh, he just, you know, let loose with his, um, you know what he was about so um but there's a lot like you know like stuff that recently happened like it, it's a it's a good way to kind of like learn you know why like such a big businessman real estate investor would would go down like that on on on, on uh you know on you know the, they were just having you know like the time of their life you know yeah. they were going to a concert and um, but the thing about it, there's a lot of things about the intermarriage, the race. The, oh, because he was uh, he home, was dating like a gay. He was dating huh? like a Indonesian or Filipino woman, right? Uh, might have been. Yeah, well, might have been living yeah, with her. And yeah, yeah, they, they were they were in it together. Uh, she, as far as I know, there's nothing. I I don't know anything. They were in it her, together. Like, you mean that she uh, was? You mean she was in on the crime? There's well, the I don't there's the picture from, of the man. My, he ended up getting my, killed. My 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 opinion is she she doesn't see it as that. She sees it kind of like it was gonna happen. What was gonna happen was gonna happen. There's no no way around it. Just with like we look from past. There you know, he what, is. What you know, like how they how they don't want us to know the past, but we know the past. So you know, you I know think, like, where she comes from. Uh huh. As far like, as, as I don't far, think she. She, she wanted that to happen, but it was going to happen. She knew that he was off? That's him as a younger yeah, he's man. he's going to get loose with his, um, like, uh, you know. Do you with, remember his name? With the crowd. Uh-huh. Joel? Uh, okay. Yeah. So I, I just think, like, you know, that, like. If, if, I don't know, you know if she a, knew about it. Uh, I mean, the, cl- the claim that uh, the authorities have told us nothing about this case. It's like what yeah, happens in yeah. Vegas stays in Vegas, right? Because he was, uh, he had rented a hotel room of, mm-hmm. I forget which one it was, I don't want to, Stephen Paddock no, is Mandalay the suspect. The, uh, that was where uh, Tupac got shot. Tupac? Tupac, yeah, he got shot in Vegas. <laughs> yeah, yeah, in Mandalay Bay. Okay. Oh, it was... Yeah, when they had the East Coast and West Coast thing. Right. And he, and he was actually a performer on stage right before the cow, uh, the rock concert. Yeah, I saw footage where Can he... you believe that? I saw footage where his posse jumped some black guy, and the black guy went after him and shot him afterwards. Uh-huh. That's what I, that's what the story oh, yeah. goes. No, like Tupac performed that night, but it wasn't Tupac. It was like, you know, someone, um, a body double, know, something like that. But you oh. singing Tupac. But you're jumping topics. I wanted to talk. You you said that 
you said that this woman knew, but I don't. I haven't heard that she knew, or I haven't heard that she didn't know, and I heard, haven't heard that she knew. But I haven't heard that um, she's been charged with anything. Yeah. No, no. All I know is that like she has control uh, over a lot of his property. Oh, uh, yeah. She, you know, probably from the will. And, wow. Uh, but, so know, even though they weren't married, they, she was on the will? Uh, that was his girlfriend. Right. She shouldn't have anything. She was just a girlfriend. Yeah. That's crazy. Know. Who knows? Yeah. But, like, I don't think, like, they, they expected that that night so of course not but you know if you're kind of like living the life and not especially out here and, and not paying attention like you know especially with like all these uh things that come up you you know you never know you're talking about when you go uh, into public places and you don't know if no, something may with, happen no just no, no like um so this they probably knew, like, you know, there was, like, a shootout, you know, something's going on. Hey, how can he take up so much, so many weapons up to the, up oh. that high, you know? Yeah, I don't know. He had a bunch yeah. of, he had a whole lot of luggage, and he was allegedly carrying them in the in luggage and took several trips. Yeah. But I don't know. And, and then how about all the, like, all the, like, uh, there's a, have you ever, uh, there's some good videos of, like he's getting flipped off during the shootout. Like the mi- he's getting like the middle finger. Oh, while the shootout. Hadn't yeah, s- yeah, I hadn't from seen like that. Alcoholics. Nice. <laughs> Interesting, man. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it, Harkman. Yeah. All right, then. Take care. Like, good talking to you. Yeah, you as well. Let me get to Johnny out of Arizona. He's been on hold a while. First time caller, Johnny. What's up? What's up, man? Hey. I honestly don't remember what I was going to ask you. All these people <laughs> babbling about nothing on the air. Uh, yeah, that, I, I didn't. I didn't was, quite follow race, what guy, that guy's point was, but uh, right, yeah, yeah. Um, my question was about race, man. You you, you kind of like lumping people together and telling them they are what you think they are. I was just wondering where you're where you're getting that from. Like, why why you believe that? Um, can you give me an example? Like, the only example I can think of is when I said that Mexicans tend to be mixed because the Spaniards mixed with the Indians, or the natives, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> oh, wow, well, that's racist to say that. But yeah, No, but that's, it's, that's it's true. No, you said... You, Racism no, no, is telling the said, truth. You said, I know, listen, you said engine, though. And oh, it, I know. It, to me, it's a... But engine's not a racist it's, term? Yes, that is. No, don't follow that. That's... that's that's already a that's already a misnomer because that was Europeans when they thought they were coming to India thought this was India. Uh, that's what the, they that's what they to told us. The I don't know, yes. but everybody. But you knew what I was talking about, so it's but a quick way to say it. I know you're, you're you're interrupting me because you're trying to prove your point as well as I'm trying to prove mine. So could you have some consideration, please? <laughs> no, I'm the I'm the host. I can interrupt. But how is that a how is that a talk if you're just trying to push what you're thinking on me? Can you let me say what I have to say first? Well, you have quit complaining. Answer. Quit complaining, Johnny. You're telling me to quit complain. I'm trying to fucking ask you. A question. Don't you can't you can't cuss on air. I gotta hang up on you if you cuss again. I don't give a fuck. You fucking. All right. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I'm sorry. We don't have a bleep button. I have to hang up on him. <laughs> and he's calling me racist when he's like judging me all angry. That's why. Um, you can't believe in the racism thing because you're going to, especially if you're going to accuse people of racism, because you're going to, like, go off and judge the person, and the judgment is the crime, right? The so-called, the immoral thing. So then he's judging me when I didn't even mean anything by engines. I like the engines. There's a lot of people that uh, call my show their part Indian, American Indian. And when I say engine... That just means, that just means if you know exactly who I'm talking about. Then I don't have to say indigenous people <laughs> or whatever. And I don't think of it as, I mean, I know a lot of people think of it as offensive. So I probably wouldn't say it in like, I don't know, uh, a, liber- a liberal like library <laughs> out loud. But whatever. Anyways. Um, yeah, so I forget his name already. But you're guilty of, like, the very thing that you're accusing me of. Actually worse, because you're, like, 
cussing and being inappropriate. It's apparently like PC to say American Indians. <laughs> Thank you, Hot Computer Smell. Appreciate the super chat. Oh, shoot. I got to open the treasure chest. Click, I mean, do the thing. <laughs> do that thing. I'm opening it. <laughs> um, I got to get to calls. Maze, my favorite caller out of Dayton, Ohio. Maze, and uh, to that guy that, that I hung up on, call back when you can be sane and, and uh, not cuss. This is a family show. Racism is family friendly, <laughs> but cussing is not. Uh, Maze, thanks for calling. What's up? Hey, Jane, you made it a whole year. Yeah. I have a question. Thank you. Are you a follower or a, 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 a leader? Uh, follower. Why? Why? Because I'm yeah. not a leader. <laughs> I mean, you should lead yourself and not follow people because you do you follow yourself to places you shouldn't be. Right? I, I doubt there is such a thing as leading I mean, yourself. You're not using your own brain power. You're using someone else's. That's what I try to tell you. I've been trying to tell you this for a whole year. Thank you. You're not Appreciate listening. It. If you use your brain and stop letting somebody else put in your brain what you think should happen, uh -huh. you can make yourself a better person. And now and all this stuff that don't exist, you don't know if it don't exist or not, because you are not the people that is that's being harmed. Yeah, we are. So the you're whites being harmed are, by the whites are, people. Hey, hold on, hold on, Maze. You're lying what? now. The whites are being harmed big time. Really? Yes. And where did you get that from? From something you Looking heard. around you. Looking around you? Yeah. Well, I look around me, I see I see Caucasians doing things, I see black people doing it, I see Asians, I see all kind of people doing stuff. But it's not well, how about yourself? <laughs> Y'all doing it in the name of Jesus. That's why y'all should be uh, wondering where is Jesus going to fit you in with this mess that y'all do every day. I don't know. Now, what do you, what do you, now you tell me where he fit you in with all of the We will that see. Do, if we'll you're see. not mingling amongst the people. Right. Huh? Exactly. So you, I hope you make another year, but I hope you start using your brain. Right. Stop using someone else's and letting, putting things, thoughts in your mind. By someone else's, who, do you, who are you talking about? Whoever you listen to and you're supposed to be a Christian. Christians don't do things like I hear out of the mouth of you and Jesse. You don't know. You're not so even a you Christian. Know? You're not representing Christianity. I know that. No, you don't and know that. Not either. And then, and then you don't know that, Mace. So, James, are you being fruitful? I mean, are you multiplying? No. Oh, okay. So you're not even following the book that you believe in, and you talk about it every day. Right, that's and true. And I don't consider myself a Christian, but that's why people were left on this earth to watch those that's supposed to be. Yeah. And you're not correcting and making anything good by uh, uh, the things that you see. You're supposed to be in the light of in, in, in his sight. Yeah. Uh -huh. would not like what he's looking at. All right. Thank you for so the input, should, Mace. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I hope you make another year. Thank you. use your brain power and leave someone else's alone, and you'll make yourself a better person. All right. So you have a good day. Thank you. You too. I wonder if Marcus Jones is her son. Hmm. Because Marcus Jones says the same thing. Oh, and then he explicitly says, I'm, I um, copy Jesse or something. Let me quickly... Oh, man. Let me get to Louie out of Idaho. Louie, good to hear from you. Man, I forgot what I called you. Louie's <laughs> cold. Louie's cold. I know. Oh, my God. They're wild. I'm telling you. Uh, well, I, I see on the on the note center or message center your father's 76th birthday is that is that yeah. true wish my father's 70 or 76 birthday happy birthday dad wow thank you man thank you happy birthday dad happy birthday to louis father louis father his name is his name is Klaus. he's german his name is class klaus K -L -A -U -S. klaus K -L -K -L -A -U -S. klaus K -L -A -U -S. This song is for you. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Klaus, that is so cool. 76 years old. Here's to another you, 76 more. I love you. I love you, man. Take care. We'll talk again. All right. Appreciate you, Louis. Take care, man. All right. Bye -bye. All right. Bye. Uh, Johnny is the same one. Um, you know what? He can't. Let's just have him call back tomorrow. Sleep on it, man. Sleep on it. You can only call once a day per show, right? Makes sense. I guess Johnny's the one who, who cussed and stuff. I had to hang... 
Is he the one who cussed? I don't know. Anyways, let me get to <laughs> Jose out of Texas. Jose, good to hear from you. Yes, always. Dude, I was just chilling, just, you know, listening to your show. And then that, what was the name, Johnny, that just called? I think it was. Oh, my God. Man. <laughs> and he sounded white. He did. He might not have been, so, but he did sound kind of white. <laughs> yeah. So, and, you know, like, it triggered him whenever you're calling them engines. And it's like, right. that's what they're right. called. They're called engines. You know, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. It's, oh my! And then right. when I, so I was like, I had to call. I was like, dude, this is bloody. Right. And then <laughs> oh, I was then I was surprised Maze called. Yeah. Hey, you tired? You titled your show. Uh, it's time for some brain power. Right. <laughs> and she's all about brain power. I, like, I know. Yes, That's Maze where I got it. Call in. <laughs> I don't have my own mind. I use Maze's mind and Jesse's mind and Joelle's <laughs> mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she was asking you, you know, like. Um, if you uh, multiply and bear, you know, or bear, yeah, you know, what is it? What is it saying? Be, f- be fruitful and multiply. Yeah, I was like, what's she hinting at? <laughs> you know, and I was like, are you gonna ask her? You know, like, you know, and if if her uh, fruit is all bad, <laughs> yeah, that's a good. <laughs> that would be a good question. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, she is funny. Yeah, I like when she calls. Yeah, totally. Appreciate it, Jose. Good to hear from yes, you, man. Sir. Yes, sir. All right. We'll talk to you later. All right. Take care. So, congratulations to the D Live Chest uh, luckiest followers. Reed Johnson. Thank you, Reed Johnson. Port Bear, Tex Mex, always faithful. Take care, Business Bear and Man Dude. Thank you, guys. And also, shout out to Psylosopher. Fi- How do you say it? Psylosopher. Fi- uh, Beardson something. Appreciate that. Wilfred P. Jen Bug. Yeah, Beards, Beards and Beardly. Wilfred P. Jen Bug. Port Bear Floshinsky. Jeez, he's tall. Brandon M. Reed Johnson. And Billy Jankum. Thank you, guys. Right on. Let's play the, the crowd goes wild. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Can't have, like, non-stuff on it. Here you are. I didn't see you on JLP, so I went to talk stream live. Jeez, I missed the pictures Joey was showing. Sorry, Betty, uh, but I appreciate you f- finding me. And Ashley, what's up? And on um, on Twitch, I have my faithful viewer, Test Monkey Thirteen A. How did Hank Jr. say? I rest my case. Oh, you know what? I'm wearing my communist T-shirt. And the reason I call it communist is because some of you guys have pointed out that REI, which is, oh, I want to say that it is liberal. It's like an outdoor company, Recreational in- Equipment Incorporated or something like that, REI. I'm wearing an REI t-shirt, and I felt that it was a nice shirt. <laughs> Christine says I need glasses. <laughs> I don't think so. But, um... You know, I still like the shirt, but it is liberal. I think it's a co-op, which means it's employee-owned, which is kind of a communist idea. But if you do it by your own volition rather than government-enforced, I'm okay with that, right? Whatever. But uh, Marcus Jones sucks says, interracial equals, oh, welcome to guess that baby's looks. Okay. appreciate that, Marcus Jones. uh, S-word. Somebody, uh, I think it was... Elevated mind was laughing at me because in the Hake News segments today, I quoted from one of the nasty, filthy accusers against Harvey Weinstein, who may be nasty and filthy himself, but his accusers are nasty and filthy. And um, one of the accusers against Harvey Weinstein told him, I'm tired of feeling like I'm a and I said B word call or something like that. B blank call. <laughs> An elevated mind told me this is a family show. I don't want to repeat it in front of the kids, but I guess I'm gonna have to repeat it because so that in case you guys don't know that this is what I was saying, uh, she said I've, I'm tired of feeling like uh, and she said booty call. That's what she. <laughs> I didn't want to repeat it. 
That was from, that's a quote from a 2017 email from Jessica Mann, who is an aspiring actress, attractive woman, and she was pushing for, um, you know, she got favors from Harvey Weinstein, and now she's accusing him, and now like he's been found guilty. To me, it's ridiculous. And these, the people who are, are ousting Harvey Weinstein, in my opinion, are worse than he is. Uh, if you don't want to go that far, you can say they're every bit as bad as he is. Or you can just say they're evil. And that would be 100% accurate. These are evil people. This, this uh, DA, Democrat di uh, District Attorney from New York, maybe New York City, Cyrus Vance Jr. He was bashing men and kissing up to the women and just being pathetic. And this jury convicted Harvey Weinstein of, of ridiculous stuff and their act, it validated the Me Too movement and the Me Too movement is not a movement to be validated. Yeah, uh, we need to deal with both the evil from both people, the men and the women, but this is an attack on men only. So it's, it's led by evil people. Evil people are not good at calling out evil. So I just wanted to point that out. All right, guys. Uh, I have more to cover, but it'll have to wait till tomorrow. Go to thehakereport.com for info and podcast stuff. I do offer this show on audio podcast, The Hake Report, on your favorite podcast platform. JLPTalk.com has both the full Jesse Lee Peterson show podcast each hour, all three hours of each day. But it also has a highlights podcast. Joelle maintains that, actually. So make sure you check that out. The Highlights podcast. It has the 90s shows and all that stuff. All right, guys. Take care.